What's up, freaks? Welcome to Steve Says, episode number 97. We got the Instagrams up here, the Facebooks down here. So will be on multiple different cameras. Tweetergram over there, MySpace over here, surrounded by all the cameras. Anyway, what's up? This is episode number 97. We're going to be talking about today about the myths and the lies that are holding you back from achieving peak performance. This originally started off as the five myths and lies. Then it went up to the 10, then the 12. And literally, since I posted the, a, a video this morning and a post this morning about this episode, it's gone up to, I don't even know, 15, 20, 25 myths and lies that are holding you back from achieving peak performance. And we're going to break them all down and go over it, of course, with a little twist of Steve Says on each one of them. So as you know, Steve says, some people will hate, but most can relate. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This week, we're talking about these, these rules that you were probably brainwashed into thinking or myths or beliefs, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to ask you, do you live by these bullshit rules? And are these false beliefs holding you back from real success? And are you finally ready to start going against the grain and finally start living life on your own freaking terms. Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy obstacles, preventing your success in your family, your health, your fitness, your, your finances, so that you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and finally start living life on your own fucking terms. We're focusing on the mind, the body, and the business. We're actually going to break those beliefs into those three categories of the mind, the body, the business, those, those myths and those false bullshit beliefs that you had. And this is all about having a role model mindset, how to operate with discipline and energy and confidence and action in being your freak self. So let's get rolling. How did this start? How did I come across this, this topic? So I was talking to the little freak show kids, Tyson and the little midget. And I, I don't remember what we were talking about, but somehow the, the topic came up of dropping a penny from the Empire State Building. And I told them if you dropped a penny from the Empire State Building, it would kill you. If it hit someone in the head, it would kill them and go right through their right through their skull. And I guess Tyson had re seen somewhere recently, that's how it came up, that it was it was bullshit. It was a myth. So here I am, 29 years old, finally finding out for the first time. I believe that my entire life, that if you got hit with a penny from the Empire Stippling, I never knew that until just now, until I was schooled by a, a freaking nine-year-old and a seven-year-old tell me that it was bullshit. Because it's so thin and light that it would just drift down like a leaf almost, and you would may, maybe feel a little speck hit you in the head if it hit you from the top of the Empire Stippling. Never knew that, so that made me start thinking. It made me start thinking, what are some of the other myths and things, But and that one is just for fun, just a bullshit little conversation you have about... If this, what would happen if this, if this and that. But what about actually just in life, actually holding you back in life? Never mind the labels that you get in life about you're not a people person and all this other stuff. These other labels that you have in life. Forget about those. What about these myths? And we're going to run through them because now there's so many. Again, it was supposed to be five. Then it was going to be 10, then 12. Now there's, I don't even know, 15, 20 of them. And again, I have you down here on multiple cameras. So I'm looking back and forth so we can make some eye contact on, on the, the, the virtual platforms. So let's start with the mind. What are some of the myths and things holding you back? The bullshit, the false beliefs holding you back. Let's start with the mind. Again, we're going to break them down to the mind, the body, and the business. So let's start with the mind. First of all, there's, there's the, the thing that goes around that says we only use 10% of our brain. Now, I don't know if you know it, but that is fucking bullshit. The, the, the truth is, the majority of your brain is being used almost, almost all the time. Like, there are different parts of your brain that are all being used. Now, that's probably true for some people who are just bullshitting and sitting around waiting for their government checks to come in and not thinking about uh, the, the future and thinking about what they could do and how they could grow and, and work on themselves. That might be... One of, one of those cases where you're not using a large percentage of your brain. But that whole thing, we only use 10% of your brain. And that's, I think that's that stuff like that. Like these beliefs have made people fucking stupid. It's made people lazy. Things like you, you, we only use 10% of our brain. Or I've heard the kids say they've heard in school and they told me about how, how they do it, That you only use 10% of your brain. Uh, you get what you get. You don't get upset. All this stuff being politically correct. 
Now, let me tell you about this, about being politically correct. If being politically correct, like I was in Vegas this past weekend for, uh, so I went, we went to a show, a comedy show, Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle and a couple of other people. Now, this is in a, an arena where they have big events like concerts and fights and all this other stuff. 15, 20, more than 20,000 people there to go see these two dudes stand on a stage with just a microphone and a bottle of water and they probably have some alcohol or whatever and just talking, just talking shit, just telling some jokes. That's it. And they're making millions of dollars just by standing there on stage telling some jokes. And you know what the majority of these jokes would be considered? Not politically correct. The kind of shit that people think but no one's willing to, to talk about or say. Some of it's just sick, twisted shit, they say. But it, it go, went to show me that there's more freaks out there than, than the world tries to make you believe. Like, there, there are wild people out there with some wild fucking thoughts. Like, some of the jokes they are just fucking over-the-top outrageous. Some of them are serious. Some of them are just funny. Some of them are just stupid just to be funny. But the point is... They, they, they drop more fucking F-bombs than I do. And they're far from politically correct. But the sad part is they're a, as comics. And now in, in whatever, actors and whatever else you want to call them. That they have to now be conscious about the shit they make jokes about. Because they're, they're afraid they're going to get like backlash or get canceled or whatever. Like your phones have to get locked up in these little cases that they pinned or like the security things that are on clothes at the store. So no one could use your phone. You had your phone in this little pouch in your pocket. So you couldn't do any kind of recording because they didn't want any of this, any of their jokes, which they almost have to be censored now. It's fucking crazy. But anyway, that is a myth. You need to be politically correct because that's still usually politically correct means you're just conforming. You're just going along with the bullshit that's out there. You do not need to follow along with that. The next... The next one is, and I told you, they were starting off at five. Now I'm just going to go on. We're just going to run through so many different ones. The next one is, you're not in competition with anyone but yourself. You're not in competition, and that is pure bullshit. Bullshit. Of course you want to get better every day. You want to constantly improve. I have a saying that I'm better than I was yesterday, but I'm not good enough for tomorrow. But to say the only, you don't need to be in competition with anyone but yourself is fucking stupid. There's nothing wrong with competition. There's competition everywhere. You need to be in competition. At work, you're going to be in competition. In school, in sports, in athletics, it's all competition. Competition is fucking healthy. So it makes you better. To think you're only in competition with yourself doesn't really give you too much to push forward to. Fuck yeah, you need to be in competition with other people. Make everything a competition. Make everything a game. Gamify everything. Make it a competition. Have fun with it. Not in competition with anyone but yourself. That's a good way to fucking hold you back. Put a lid on yourself. Put a ceiling above you and make sure that you don't get too successful or make it too far, which some people don't want, don't want you to have. The next is, is, is it's, the, it's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. Another line that is bullshit in my Steve says peak freak fucking opinion. It's bullshit. It's, only, it's the thought that counts. And that's, that's the mistake with the, the, what's that, the, the book and the movie, The Secret, where it's all about manifestation. Trust me, I'm, I'm all into meditation, visualization, manifestation, but that all needs to be fought up with motherfucking action to just say it's only the thought that counts. If I think about holding the door open for an old lady, but I'm in a hurry, so I don't do it. But I thought about it. I thought I should do it, that old lady probably, but I don't do it. That didn't fucking help. It's the action of actually holding the fucking door open. Holding the door open for anyone, not just an old lady. Anyone that's within a few steps of you as you're going into, going into a place. Participation trophies are bullshit. Yes, sir. Jeremy Mullen. Participation trophies. Because competition is, is, is bad. It's, it's scary. You know, they don't need to have competition. I have a bunch of different cameras. So I'll try to read some of the comments. Jump in the conversation here. If you have some, some things, what are some things your parents told you? That are, are holding you back now in life as an adult. What are the some things holding you back? Some of the bullshit myths or whatever else that are holding you back now in life as a freaking adult. That you really realize you need to fucking get over. What are some of those things? So the next one is, at least you tried. At least you tried. Fuck try. Fuck try and do. 
I try. I, I approached Nike with that. I told them that I tried to have them change their saying from "just do it" to "fuck try do," but they didn't. Get, I, I, I'm still waiting to hear back from them. I think we're going to get some some work with. We're going to get some uh, leeway with that. We're going to get moving with that. But sh- at least you tried. Trying doesn't mean shit. Sure, you're not going to fail and stop and quit. No one said quitting, but at least you tried. So all you have to do is try. You don't have to really put your all out maximum effort with fucking uh, positive attitude and go all out and push as hard as you can and and bust your ass and go for it and keep digging and, and persevering and persisting. But at least you tried. At least you tried is bullshit. Trying, unfortunately, is not fucking enough. If you try to close a deal every single day, but you close zero deals, guess what? You're going to be fucking broken. Your family is going to be hungry and you're not going to be able to give them the experiences that you didn't have as a kid. Fuck that. Fuck, try, do. At least you try is another one. Let's go into the body. Let's go into the health and fitness. And there are so many of these. I, I, I couldn't even contain myself, but we'll just, we'll just hit on a few of them. The first one is the whole food, food pyramid. If you look at that old food pyramid they used to teach, they taught us in school at least, and I I still see it around in in the basics about, and then you wonder why that there's like 30 to 40% of Americans are obese, 50 to 60 or even more probably are overweight, more than that are unhealthy with tons and tons of 10 to 15 servings of this and that and breads and, and cereals and pastas and all this bullshit. You wonder why there's fucking heart problems and, and diabetes and all this other bullshit. Food pyramid, absolute bullshit. If anything, it should be inverted, flipped upside down. And let's see. Strategic and confident. Pursue opportunities where you have unique advantages. Yes. Yes. Not just try. Not just freaking try. So the food pyramid, another one that's bullshit. The next one is that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Another one, it's not going to serve you. Should you have breakfast? Should you fuel yourself in the morning? Fuck yeah. I'm a believer in getting some fuel in your body first thing in the morning. I don't really do any diets. I just eat healthy. I just have discipline in what I'm eating. I don't shovel a bunch of shit into my mouth. I control what I eat. I have a, I have a saying, you can... I can eat whatever the hell I want to eat because I don't eat whatever the hell I want to eat. So breakfast being the most important meal of the day, no. Probably if you had to say which, which, if, if, which is the most important meal of the day, if anything, well, first of all, my, my answer would always be your most important meal of the day is the meal that you're on right now. Having focus and discipline, making sure it's fueling you, it's serving you, it's according to your goals and your mission is not going to fuck you up and you're having your your mo- moderation and discipline in right now. The most important meal of the day is the one you're on right now. But if you had to say, all right, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever, 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 what is the most important? If any, I'd probably say your post-workout meal is the most important work meal of the day. Before that, probably your pre-workout meal and then maybe breakfast. Then maybe breakfast. When it comes to nighttime, you can go to sleep on protein. You don't want to go to sleep on carbs and fat. That's besides the point. The next one, rest day, rest day, how you need a rest day in your schedule, in your calendar, you have to put it on there and take a rest day. Here's the thing about fucking rest days. Here's the thing about rest days and cheat days for that matter. Let's start with rest days. So seven days in a week, you put a a one or two rest days on the calendar. But here's the thing, you will will be fucking disciplined with those rest days. But on on the training days, if something comes up, an emergency happens, you'll miss the training. You won't be disciplined with that. You'll find, you'll find reasons not to train on training days, but the rest day, you'll never work out on the rest day because it's a rest day. Oh, I didn't train today. It was a rest day. Wait a minute. What about yesterday when you worked two extra hours, you got home because you weren't efficient enough at work? Or what about the day before that when you were out hanging out until three in the morning, she woke up too late and you didn't get your morning work out. What about those days? Those weren't rest days. You weren't disciplined on the fucking work days. Don't be disciplined on your rest days. So don't schedule any fucking rest days. If anything, schedule an active day. An active day. I don't even want to call it active recovery. Because people who are active recovery, they mean sit on their fucking ass. I'm going to say an active day. Once a week. Plan for six days of training. And one active day a week. Best case scenario, you got six days of fucking training in. And you got one day of active work in. You're going to be in great shape. You're going to be healthy. If it's planned and programmed the right way. Worst case... You had some of those 
emergencies come up. So you lost, you broke your discipline and you got your five days in that you want to get in anyway because you missed two of those days. Your active day and one of your work days. Because I know how it goes. I see it all the time. I've seen this now for over two fucking decades. Damn near 25 years I've seen this going on. So this is not just some stuff that's made up. This is off of decades of data of tens and hundreds of thousands of people that I've, I've, I've dealt with in the last few years. And the next one is a cheat day. Same thing as the rest day. Why would you plan, uh, intentionally put on your calendar, uh, all right, this is the day I'm going to cheat. This is the day I'm going to go against all my morals and values and goals. This is the day I'm going to go against everything I stand for. This is the day I'm going to intentionally put a bunch of garbage in my body. Now, if you want to have some food that you have as a reward or that you understand what you're putting into your fucking body is not going to be optimal for your performance and your goals and your results and you're willing to mentally, emotionally, and physically deal with that, that's another story. But to have a cheat day or a cheat meal where you're going to have cake and all these carbs and garbage and whatever else bullshit that you know you have no fucking business eating, zero cheat days. I don't schedule a fucking cheat day. Well, I'll put it on my calendar that I'm going to break discipline. I'm going to break everything that I stand for on this day and so I can look forward to it. Fucking stupid. Zero cheat days. Zero cheat days. So put it, put it in the comments there about what are some beliefs that you have that are stuck in your head. All right, let's keep rolling. Eight glasses of water per day. You should drink eight glasses of water today. Should you stay hydrated? Fuck yeah. But I'll tell you what, if I drank only eight glasses of water a day, I will be dehydrated. I would not be able to perform. My productivity would be down. I'd be probably out of shape. I'd probably have injuries. My workouts would suck. Eight glasses a day is not going to cut it. I think you only need eight glasses a day. It matters about time of year, what environment you're in, where, where actually geographically you are. Ton, tons of factors. What's your activity level? How much training you're doing? What's your experience? How, what, what types of, how much food are you eating? Like eight glasses a day. In general, if you're doing the shit you're supposed to be doing and not scheduling those fucking cheat days and not scheduling those fucking rest days, you're going to need a whole lot more than eight glasses of water per day. I don't even know. I'll get double, triple that sometimes. If you're not running to take a piss all the time, you're probably not drinking enough water. The next one is sugar and gluten. Sugar and gluten. Oh, I'm on a gluten-free diet. I'm going to take the kids off of gluten. The kids have too much sugar. That's why they're hyperactive and they have ABC and they have ACDC. And then we're going to go put them on some prescription drugs and some medication, which those are two combined here. Sugar, gluten, prescription drugs, drugs, medication. Of course, there are certain instances where people need to be on prescription drugs and whatever. But probably, probably 90% of the, pe the, the people, especially kids that are on prescription drugs, should not be on that shit. And I'm no doctor. And listen, if you're taking advice, medical advice from me, that's your own fucking problem. I'm just here talking on a fucking, talking to a camera. So, but the point is sugar and gluten. That's not why your kids are acting up. They're probably acting up. Because you're not spending enough fucking time with them. You're not teaching them enough. You're not teaching them how to think. You're not giving them the right mental and physical activities. Ever think of that? Stop blaming fucking sugar and gluten. All of a sudden, gluten. Get the fuck out of here. Get the hell out of here with that. That I am fucking awesome. Yes, I am fucking awesome. I tell myself that and I tell 100 people that a day. Or at least I try to. Prescription drugs, medication, you said it. Next one, milk does a body good. No, usually cutting as much dairy out of your out of your diet as you can is going to get you, keep you in optimal shape. Kids can have a little milk, sure, but in general, not going to happen. Next one is turkey. Turkey and the tryptophan, the evil tryptophan is going to make you tired, especially on Thanksgiving. That's why I was so tired. Do you know there's so many foods that have much more tryptophan than fucking turkey? I think cheddar cheese has like double the tryptophan of turkey, or I know at least more than turkey. How come cheese is not the, the evil one that makes you tired? No, 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 no. You know why the food makes you tired? It's not the tryptophan. It's the you shoveling too much fucking shit in your pie holster that's making you tired. That's what it is. It's it, gorging on shit and wolfing down all kinds of shit that you have don't need to fucking eat. That's what's making you fucking tired. No tryptophan or fucking turkey is making you tired, okay? You're having a mountain of turkey with a mountain of mashed potatoes with butter and gravy and corn and fucking marshmallows on top of your, your whatever, yams and shit. And, and you could just transfer that into anything in a regular diet, regular everyday diet. It's not the fucking turkey. It's not the fucking tryptophan. I hate to tell you. I hate to break it down to you. That's not what it is. 
What's up? First time in the live. Yes, what's up? Thank you for joining us. So tryptophan, bullshit. Next one is weightlifting will stunt your growth. I was told that as a kid, and that's why I end up being a bony little skinny kid that had to have to work out fucking 10 times harder with the shitty genetics I have. Like I could lift, I could train legs all day. I could squat fucking double my body weight. I'll deadlift damn near triple my body weight and still have freaking chicken legs. But I was told weightlifting will stunt your growth. It's fucking bullshit. Just like weightlifting for women will make them bulky. You won't get bulky if you're not eating to get bulky. If you have those fucking cheat days, yeah, your fat ass is going to get bulky. But not from lifting fucking weights. You got to eat to get big. Not just lift to get big. You have to eat to get big. Stop fucking eating to get big and you won't get big. But weightlifting stunting your growth, even for kids. Kids should be moving around, lifting weight. Not, not, I'm not saying they got to be doing any heavy power lifting or any bullshit like that. But to do some weightlifting, like, like Tyson's been lifting his whole freaking life. We'll see. If he turns out to be a midget, then I guess I'm wrong on that one. But I'm pretty sure weightlifting is not stunning your growth. Unless you're doing some massive bodybuilding, powerlifting routine. Hours and hours a day of just lifting massive weight, giving yourself hernias and injuries and all kinds of shit. And maybe it's going to stunt your growth. But in general, it's Fucking bullshit. And again, don't forget, you're taking medical advice from me. You got bigger fucking problems than worried about weightlifting, stunt your growth, or if turkey has tryptophan. I'm just telling you what I've seen in the last 20 to 25 years coaching people with tens of thousands of fucking case studies. That's what we're talking about here. Emmett Smith made me tired every time he beat the lines in Thanksgiving. Oh, now we're having... You heard about Thanksgiving, and now we're having some... Now we're having some flashbacks on, on uh, traumatic experiences from Thanksgiving. I don't even want to get into some Thanksgiving traumatic experiences with our fucked up family. All right, next one. Drinking alcohol is the best way to cure a hangover. That's just created from a fucking alcoholic. Fucking stupid. It's just going to make you more dehydrated. Probably a worse headache. Probably make it worse. And final on the health and fitness side of things that the vaccine is going to keep you safe and the mask is going to keep you safe. You ain't sticking that fucking jab into me or my kids or putting a face diaper on. But again, don't take advice from me. Let's strip it onto the business side. That was the mind, the body. Let's go into the business. Now let's get down into even the, the more dirty and grimy shit. You need to go to college to get a good job, to get a nice steady job, get nice benefits, fucking benefits. I love the word benefits. You got to go to college. You got to get a degree. I'll tell you this. Unless you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, fuck college. And again, if you're taking now educational advice from me, you've got more fucked up problems than to worry about whether or not you should go to college. You probably should have stayed in college then, if that's the case. But anyway, all right, if you, if you took, and, and I'll say, you took my, my family. Probably took the amount of, probably, I'm guessing, if you took the amount of college that each person went to, and you have to invert it to talk about how much money each of them makes and how much debt each of them is in compared to how much college they had. Unless, of course, a doctor, a lawyer, a surgeon, shit, then you got to go to school for like 50 years. I know people who went to fucking college, and there's statistics out there the, the, of what people went to college for. They don't even have a job in what they went to college for, like 80-something percent or 60-something percent or whatever their degree was. They don't even have a job in it. But there's people who go to college, spend all this fucking money to go to college, all this time, all these years of their life, going to college, spending all this money to get out and be in so much debt. So they go get a job. Now the job that they got, that they went to college for to get, is not even enough to pay for the fucking college that got them the job that they went to college for. Do you follow that big fucking clusterfuck? Exactly, it's a clusterfuck. It's bullshit. You don't need to go to college. Learn some high-level skills. Some kind of service. Be of service. Something that could provide value. Learn how to solve people's fucking problems. Learn sales. Learn marketing. Don't need college for any of that shit. Ne or, or to keep a steady job. And, and I love the word benefits. Benefits. Or what kind of benefits do you have? That I, I would, whenever I was hiring at our gyms in New York, and that was always one of the first questions someone would ask about, what are, what are the benefits? What are the benefits? Like, the benefits are... You get to show up every day with a positive attitude, give maximum effort, and you're going to get paid for your, for your outcome, for your results. That's what, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get paid for your outcome and your results. 
So every job, when you, if you think about it, every job is a commission job. You don't do your fucking job, you're going to be fired. You can work at Mc, fucking McDonald's flipping your McWhoppers with bacon. If you're not flipping them fast enough and serving the people fast enough with a good enough attitude, guess what? You're going to get fired. So even freaking shit Donald's is going to be a commission job. So to think that you need to worry about a steady job and stable job and benefits, nothing's fucking stable because your ass could be gone. The company could go on to the next day. Work fucking hard. Get some, get some skills. Get some high-level income skills. And the other one is that you just have to only work hard. You can't only just work hard. You also have to have a good fucking attitude. Just working hard alone is not going to cut it. That's another myth. That you could just, just hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Yes, you need to work fucking hard. But you also need to work smart. You also need to be productive. You also need not to be a fucking asshole. And you also have to have a positive fucking attitude. Maximum effort alone is not good enough. It needs to go with a positive attitude. Another one. It's lonely at the top. Listen, if it's lonely at the top, you're fucking doing it wrong. You are doing it wrong. You should be surrounded by awesome fucking people. If you're at that, whatever you want to call the top. You know, there's always going to be a new top. Always going to be a next level. A next level of success. So, go to Harvard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, lonely at the top is... is not that means you've you've burned so many fucking bridges. Probably you've been probably a, a a dictator, been a dick, a horrible leader, a horrible coach, a horrible mentor, a horrible friend, a horrible whatever. If it's lonely at the top, sure you might have different stresses or anxieties, whatever position you're in, but it should never be lonely at the top. It should be fucking awesome at the top. It should be fucking awesome. It should be freedom at the fucking top. That's what it should be. So don't let this bullshit things hold you back. The next one is you need to save your money. Save your money. Save your money. Now, you should have some money put aside. Three to six to 12 months of expenses already ready. So when some bullshit like this this corona thing happens and you're told by the Nazi government of what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do in your own business, your own fucking life, and your own health, your own family, your own money, when you're told what you're not allowed to do in this free country... At least you have some money to hold you over, to fall back on. So you should have some money saved up just for that. But not saving just to fucking save. You should be investing your money. Investing in education. Investing in personal development. Investing in coaches. Investing in real estate. Investing in your business. In marketing. In getting some better sales. Investing in a, in a team. Investing in leveling up your team. Investing in educating yourself. Educating your team. You should be using your money to generate either more money, more experiences, more education, more growth, more personal development. Just saving your money is not going to cut it. And this all started from me still thinking just till about a fucking week ago. This is a true story. True story. I thought since a, from a week ago, if you dropped a penny off the Empire State Building, I didn't think it would just kill you. I thought it would go right through your skull. I thought it might even come out your asshole. That's what I thought. Until Tyson told me no, it would be like a leaf hitting you in the head. It's like, no shit. It took me 29, these long 29 years of my life to finally figure that out about dropping that. And then we went into the, the five second rule, drop a food on the floor for five seconds. And of course it's fine to drop food on the floor for five seconds. Bacteria can't transfer with less than five seconds, right? Of course not. Or what was the other one? That, yeah, if you piss on a jelly, a jellyfish a sting. That's how you, you cure a jellyfish sting. You piss on it. It's pure bullshit. I think hot water is the only thing to ease the pain a little bit, but pissing on it's going to do nothing, probably irritate it more. But that's the, the myth. These are just the fun ones now we're going to get it to. And the final one, we're going to go out with a bang, is that if you could suck the venom out of a snake bite, what if the snake bites on some strange ass parts of your body? Are you going to ask your buddy to go suck the venom out of it? Answer that question. That's a myth you probably don't want to find out about. Or maybe you do freak shows. I don't know. But anyway, stop letting these myths, stop letting false beliefs, stop letting labels and bullshit things that were brainwashed in your head, whether it was from your parents, your friends, your teachers, whoever, hold you back from reaching peak performance in your life. Put in the comments below, what are some of the things that you remember from either your childhood or even from adulthood that just are not serving you, that you think are bullshit, just myths and theories and bullshit stories that you tell that you were told that are holding you back? What are some more? Add some more to the list. We went over a bunch of them. Anyway, I got to get rolling. So let me tell you this. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.